Thank you very much for the introduction and the privilege of the podium to present our study on the resolution of anemia and improved quality of life following laparoscopic hiatal hernia repair. I don't have any relevant disclosures. Hiatal hernia is the most common structural abnormality of the foregut with a growing prevalence due to multiple reasons. One is the aging population, and also the other one is the increase in the obesity epidemic. Um, Patients um, will typically present with anemia. Patients with very large hiatohenias will present with anemia. And this link was actually first suggested by Colin in 1960s and then confirmed by Cameron in the 1970s. Cameron and Higgins then went on to describe gastric erosions on the gastric mucosal surface as a main source of blood loss. And um, in addition to that, um, the exact pathophysiology of these erosions are currently unclear. However, there are multiple explanations for the possible cause of these erosions. And one is mechanical trauma in the diaphragmatic hiatus due to traction forces during normal breathing. Another is um, acid-related injury to the gastric mucosal surface. Sorry, just going back. Now, um, for patients who present with anemia, um, secondary to a large hiatal hernia with the endoscopic evidence of Cameron's lesions or without them, typically do well with medical management. However, for patients who's, uh, who are refractory to medical uh, management, uh, surgical intervention is typically recommended. And there is establishment in the literature that hiatal hernia repair actually helps with the resolution of anemia. However, a majority of these studies contain very small surgical series and also do not evaluate the quality of lives of patients postoperatively. So at our center, we were interested in finding out the exact impact of elective hiatal hernia repair on the resolution of anemia, as well as the improvement in the quality of life of this subset of patients. So we performed a retrospective review of a prospectively maintained database within a six-year period we included patients who had an established history of anemia in addition to a confirmation of uh, endoscopic confirmation of Cameron's lesion or those who also had a high uh, suspicion of Cameron's lesion based on a diagnosis of exclusion. We defined anemia as less than 12 grams per deciliter in females and less than 13.5 in males. We then collected demographic and perioperative data including ion supplementation, hemoglobin levels, um, need for blood transfusion, and analyze these. We also evaluated the quality of lives of patients using these four validated survey instruments. Our main primary outcomes were the resolution of anemia, the discontinuation of iron supplementation, or need for blood transfusion, and also the improvement of quality of life postoperatively. We performed statistic analysis using a paired student t-test, a one-way ANOVA, and we also perform logistic regression analysis. So this table shows our patient demographic, and overall, we're able to include 92 patients in the final analysis. Majority of these patients were female, and about 62% of patients had endoscopic confirmation of Cameron's lesion. The remainder had a high suspicion of Cameron's lesion based on the diagnosis of exclusion. Also, about 91% patients, of patients actually had a history of pathological reflux, which have been shown to be an independent risk factor for the development of Cameron's lesion. For perioperative outcomes, majority of our patients underwent a nissen fan duplication in addition to a hiatal hernia repair. A subset of these patients who underwent a fandoplasty also had an esophageal lengthening procedure. Four patients had a gastropexy via gastrostomy tube placement, and there was one intraoperative um, complication, which was basically an injury to the distal esophagus. This was actually noticed at the time of surgery and um, repaired primarily. Postoperatively, we reached out to the PCPs of all our patients to obtain the most up-to-date um, blood work. This is because the majority of our patients actually come from a very broad ge geographical base and are not uh, found in our EMR. And what the results show was there was a significant improvement in the mean hemoglobin level of the whole study population. This was also true when we actually um, stratified the results by gender distribution. Also, postoperatively, 
74% of patients who were anemic preoperatively also achieved resolution of the anemia at latest follow-up of 17 months. This allowed almost 94% of them to actually discontinue their use of iron supplementation or the need for blood transfusion in the post-operative period. We also performed a logistic regression analysis to determine the main predictors of anemia resolution. And what we found out was being on PPI postoperatively was not significantly linked to the resolution of anemia. However, the discontinuation of PPI only after surgery was actually predictive of anemia resolution. This may suggest that mechanical trauma might have played a significant role in the pathogenesis of anemia in this group of patients. We also evaluated quality of life outcomes and patient reported significant improvements at latest follow-up across all survey instruments. They also reported significant satisfaction with their symptom control at latest follow-up. There were a few complications um, within the cohort. However, majority of these were managed non-operatively. There was, however, three reoperations. Um, two patients presented with failure to thrive due to intractable nausea and vomiting and were required um, enteral access for nutritional support. One patient had a gastrostomy tube placed and the other had a jejunostomy tube placed. The third patient presented four months after surgery with a GE junction perforation, mainly due to non-adherence to our dietary regimen. So as far as we know, as far as we're concerned, this is the largest series that examines the resolution of anemia and the improvement of quality of life within this cohort of patients. And our results show that in an appropriately selected group of patients, hiatal hernia repair actually contributes to the resolution of anemia and also the improvement of the quality of lives of this patient. However, we do need prospective studies that um, prospectively um, uh, follow the resolution of anemia and the resolution of Cameron's lesion with endoscopic and anemia-related um, lab follow-up. Thank you. <laughs>